goodness of God. Good evening, everybody. Welcome over to you, Sister Jerry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you're watching from, I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So welcome to the Canada Vectors Women Prayer and Bible Study Meeting. It's always an honor to have you here, taking time off your busy schedule to be part of us tonight. Today, we have a special guest in the house. And before we go ahead, or before I go ahead and introduce the guest, I would like us to say a word of, a word of prayer. I would like us to invite the Holy Spirit and ask him to take control and that our hearts will be good soil for the word of God. And that it, when we receive the word of God, it shall bear fruit that would last. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. And if you can pray in tongues, go ahead and pray in tongues. Let's pray. Oh, thank you, mighty God. I thank you for the word that you have for us, for what you have for us this evening. We've come to be blessed by you. We've come to honor you. We've come to worship you, Father. I pray that as we receive your word tonight, dear Father, oh Lord, that we will make it with faith like the very end We will do more research. It will send us such a deep oh, Father. Hey, because nothing your word. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Hey, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we pray for this. Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, that you will speak with us. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost.
Thank you, Sister Ijang. It is a pleasure to be amongst all of the women here in Canada, Virtuous Women of Canada. It is a blessing to be here. It is an honor to be here. I was talking to Sister Ijang yesterday. I told her that I don't take it for granted. You know, sometimes you, you can know people and then they call you up to share somewhere. You just be like, okay, they're just my sisters and you just, just do anyhow. But every time I'm called up to talk to women, I see it as an honor. I see it as a privilege. I see it as a blessing because the lives of women and the things that women are called to do is, are very, is very dear to my heart. And I want to see women find that thing that they are happy to do, that thing that God has called them to do and find it and begin to walk in it and fulfill it in their lives. Because I believe that when women find their very purpose, they live a very fulfilling life. They mm -hmm. live a very happy life. So I want to say thank you to the uh, Canada Virtuous Women. I, I know that your leader reached out to me, but I believe that all of you had to concert to that too to agree for me to come speak to you. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. I want to thank my sisters that have joined me here today. Dr. Irene Barika. Thank you, um, Sister Seraphine. I know she's in Canada, but she's my dear sister that I had to tell. I'm on this platform today, come join me. And I believe my husband should be here. Thank you, my covering for being here. And he's my cheerleader. So he's my greatest cheerleader. So I want to say thank you to him. Nice. Uh, I know uh, there's somebody here. She might not know me, but I know her very well. I just want to say, Sister Ruth Polue. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name very well. I've, well I've, I've met her on different platforms. I've heard people talk about her. And I remember my husband saying, Did you know? I said, Oh, I know her, but I know she doesn't know. But I want to say hi, Sister Ruth. I've heard so much about you. Keep doing the great work that you are doing and supporting women. So I want to dive into what we have here today. Sister Jerry has already prayed for us. I want to tell you, Sister Jerry is my classmate. <laughs> I remember when we went to school together in Seca, we used to be classmates. So it's just a blessing to come to reconnect again at this level, serving God and just being a blessing to humanity. So Sister Jerry, this will have not happened without you. And so I say thank you for connecting me to these great women of God out there in Canada and at large. So since we have already prayed, I want, to, I want to start on what God laid upon my heart to share with us today. So <clears throat> like I said before that, my heart is sold out to the destiny of women. So there's, if there's anything that has to do with the lives of women or the destinies of women, the calling of women, I am very passionate about it. You can wake me any time of the day. I, I, I will muscle up strength. I will muscle up energy to be part of that thing. I used to say that uh, if even if somebody had called me at the nick of time and said, we are doing something for women, no matter how busy my schedule is, I want to be part of it because my heart is truly sold out to the destinies of women around the world. I want to start by saying that we live in a world when women think that we have to fight for our rights in society. Even in our homes, we have to fight for our rights. We feel pushed back. We feel that we are prevented sometimes to do what we want to do. But I, but I believe that there is hope for us women. In the midst of all of that pushing, trying to find your right, trying to be who you want to be, trying to uh, try tr in the business where you are trying to get your place, you want to find your place. You, I know all of us have heard this phrase, I want to find my place, I want to find myself. There's all the button, I, I know my rights, I want to be. I want to be at the top. I want to be the leader. But we have all of this pushing going around us. Our rights, I want to say that, is embedded in our purpose in God. And not in any man, not in a government. Therefore, we should return to our God, who is our creator, who can give us the rights that we need, who can equip us with the things that we need to have 
to become all that we are supposed to be. We don't need a man, we don't need a government to give us the rights that we are all searching for. The world in this 21st century, there's all the push and power, power bustling about we want our rights, we want to be who we want to be. We don't need nobody. But I want to say today that I want to register today that our rights is found in God. Virtuous women of Canada, our rights are found in God. It is not found in any government. It is not found in any man, but it is found in God. And so with that said, I wanted to share with us on the topic, the unstoppable woman. The unstoppable woman. The word unstoppable can also mean unbeatable, unsurpassed, unconquerable. For a woman to have such attributes, she must know who she is and who she is. She's not easily moved by the circumstances that are around her. There is a woman in the Bible who was unstoppable in her time. And I want, her, I want us to explore her life today. Her name was Esther. So I want us to read from the book of Esther chapter four, verse 12 to 17. Esther chapter four, verse 12 to 17. I'm gonna read from the NIV version. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I read, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you have come to your royal, royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instruction, instructions. So today I want us to see what is it that made Esther unstoppable. I want us to explore this. We have said that an unstoppable woman, we, we, we are unstoppable. What is it about Esther that made her unstoppable? That we also can dive into it. We can also glean from that and be the unstoppable women in our society, in our community, and in our world at large. So number one is Esther found her purpose. I was listening um, to another sister on this platform. She shared about purpose some weeks back when I popped on, and I really loved her teaching. So if you know me well, anytime I speak somewhere, purpose is going to come up because it is part of my DNA. And the, I wanted to draw from this statement from our scripture that we just read. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther, given, was a queen in her time, but she needed to discover why God brought her into the palace. Yes, she was a queen. Her people were about to be destroyed. I know we all know this story, so I didn't want to read the all entire thing, but I want us to focus in. She was a queen. And this was a moment when the children of the, the Jews were going to be destroyed. And Mordecai steps up to her and said, do not think that you are going to be spared because you are in the palace. But think about this. Who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther was living in the palace. She thought, okay, maybe this is all that I needed to be here for. Be the queen, be the wife of the king, and just love you, royalty and just be in the, in the kingdom. But there was a wake up call for her. Who knows if you were sent to the palace for such a time as this? It was a question of her purpose. 
are we just leaving? Esther was living there and just feeling, oh, I'm just going to be the queen. I'm just going to, but why are you the queen? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I this person? Why am I Ijan? Why am I placed in the position that I'm finding myself? Why was I placed in this family? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why am I placed in this job? Why am I placed in this person's life? Why am I always, why is my heart always drawn to this certain group of people? Have you ever asked yourself that question? This was a question that was posed to Esther. It was a challenge. Who knows if you have come to the royal position for such a time as this? So Esther rose, she was challenged by that question and she said, wait a minute, maybe this is, this is why God brought me here, to deliver the people of God. So she was determined, she said, go fast and I will fast on my own end with my people. You go fast for me and I will fast and I'm going to go to the king and I'm going to lay before him my request. If I perish, I perish. That is how she was able to discover what her purpose was in the palace. I want to say this, Miles Monroe, I know we all, some of us might know him, some might not know him, but he was a great leader who resided in, in Bahamas. He said that our purpose, this is how he describes God's purpose for us. He says God's purpose is a key of our fulfillment. The best way to experience fulfillment in life is to find God's purpose and then walk with him to fulfill it. That is the only way we can find fulfillment. Have you thought about the fact that if Esther just stayed in the palace and was just enjoying royalty and maybe get frustrated with it and just ask herself, is this all about it to be a queen? Have you come to a place in your life and you are, yes, as a young girl, we are all here. I know some people are married, some are not married, but have you asked yourself, when you were a young lady, you told yourself, oh, I wish someday I would get married. Someday I'm going to make a home for myself. Someday I'm going to, and then you get married and then you discover that, is this, is this all about it? Mm -hmm. You begin to ask yourself, is this all about marriage? Is this the marriage that people were singing about every day in, day out? You went to places, you saw people, married people, or you saw them on social media, and you get into marriage and you're asking yourself, is this all about it? Yeah. But now the question is, why am I in this marriage? What is the purpose? Why did God bring, why did God connect me with my husband? Why am I in this certain family? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Those are the questions we want to ask ourselves. I have this favorite uh, author. Had, she goes by the name Valerie Burton. She describes purpose as, your purpose is to love and serve others using your gifts, your strengths and your resources. Our purpose is not something that is absurd. It's not out of this world. It is simply just to love and to serve others using your gifts, your strengths and your resources. So what are your gifts? What are your resources that you have that God has given to you? What are your strengths? Can you use that to serve other people? Can you use that to reach out to people? I say that your purpose is part of your DNA. It's not something strange to you. Maybe you are already living in your purpose and you don't even know it. But now it will take intentionality for you, be, for you to begin to walk in it because that is where you find your fulfillment. I want to tell you women, your fulfillment is found in finding your purpose. That is how when you begin to walk in your purpose, when you begin to live in your purpose, you become unstoppable. Look at Esther, when she discovered this is why I am in the palace. Nothing could stop her. She was fired up. She was empowered. She was brave enough to face the king and say, look here, king, my people are about to be destroyed and I want you to do something. But it comes with knowing who you are in God, knowing your identity, knowing why you are where you are doing what you are doing. When you don't have that understanding, Everything comes and goes in your life. People walk in and people walk out. People do anything that they want to do to you. You find yourself in different places. You find yourself connecting with the wrong people. You find yourself hopping from one thing to the other and not finding fulfillment. And you see other people advancing in whatever they are doing and you are left frustrated. Hmm. That was me six years ago. 
I thought that as a young woman in my teens, getting to my early 20s, I thought that getting married as a child of God, getting married to somebody who is also in Christ, that, that is my life. But I was so wrong. When I got married, I was 23 and 43 right now. I thought that this was it. On, a, on another note, the plus side of it, I thought, okay, I'm, married, I'm getting married to a man of God. Uh -huh. my husband was a preacher then I'm like yes we're going to do ministry we're going to do this we're going to do that but that I was shocked that that was not it because I did not even understand what is my purpose what is it that I'll be doing in this whole entire ministry that my husband was leading I was just like okay I'm just going to join the man of God to do the work of God but I was so wrong because I I got into marriage and I found out that my husband was happy. He was, he was fired up. He was just enjoying life, doing the things that God has called him to do. And I was sitting there and asking myself, so where do I come in? Where do I fit in? I know sometimes in our context, we feel that as, in, especially in our African context, you feel that, okay, if I'm married to the leader, uh, I, be, I automatically become the leader or, you know, the mama, the first lady, the first whatever lady. ourselves. <laughs> no, from day one, my husband told me it, that that is not how it's gonna roll. You have to walk, walk your way to that place and earn your respect. Mm. Nobody's gonna respect you because you are married to a man of God. Not, it's not gonna happen. And so I'm sitting there, the years have gone by. I tell you that this was my life till six years ago. And then I began to ask myself this question. I said, Claudia, who are you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I want you to ask yourself, put your name in place and ask yourself, Ijan, who are you? Jerry, who are you? Patience, who are you? Betty, who are you? Ruth, who are you? Ask yourself, who am I? Are you able to answer that question? I was not able to answer that question. Apart from that, okay, I'm Mrs. Claudia Gafisi. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm a student going to school to become a nurse. That was, that was it. I'm a mom, I have three children. Yeah. There's more to that. I couldn't answer that question of who I am. And I could see that frustration was just building up in me. And I said, I need to find, I need to find myself. I need to go back to God and say, God, why am I here? Why did you, why, why did you create me? And as, as I began to ask this question, the resources for me to answer this question began to roll in. I am a firm believer that when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. When That's you don't right. ask questions, you don't have any answer. If you have no desires for life, you have no, uh, you don't have any aspiration, you will be going nowhere. Mm. I began to ask this question. I began to ponder on these things. And lo and behold, my husband bought me this book. It was tied to understanding the power and the purpose of a woman. I was not a book, big book reader. And I, and I decided to, okay, I'm going to read this book. And as I began to read this book, it gave me an understanding of who I am and I was able to find my identity and find what God has called me to do upon this earth. I knew that I always loved to talk to women. I knew that I always wanted to share with women. I always wanted to counsel women. But what is it about it? Everybody can reach out to women. We have a platform here to reach out to women. But yeah. it, within this platform, each and every one of us has a contribution. Sister Ijan, her heart might be sold out to help the less privileged. Somebody else might just be, I want to help women uh, develop their career. Some women mm -hmm. are different stuff, but I was asking God, yes, I've been called to reach out to, but what about women that I've been called to do? So as I read more and more and answered more and more questions, I came to discover that my own purpose is to help other women find themselves and live out their purpose. So I'm a big fan of that for women to find that thing that God has called them to do 
and to begin to live in it because that is where you find your fulfillment. That is where you find your happiness. That is what gave me fulfillment, sisters. It's not because I was married. It's not because I had children. It's not because I went to school and earned an education. It's not because down the road I'm going to have a doctorate degree, but because I have found myself in God and I'm walking in it. Mm. This year, I proposed to myself. I asked myself, Claudia, you say that your purpose is to help women find their purpose, but what are you doing intentionally about it? So I sat down to myself. I said, I usually, we, I usually go out to have a coffee date with other women. I'm like, what if you sit down with this woman on a coffee date and talk to them about finding their purpose and begin to walk in? And I created this platform. I called it Coffee Plus Purpose. So my goal is to reach out to 12 women this year on a one-on-one -on, -one, on -on -one platform and just talk to them about finding their purpose and see how they can begin to walk in it and to fulfill it. If it's just to take care of your children in this season, how can you do it intentionally so that your children will become all that God has purpose for them? Mm. I know of a woman in the Bible also, her name is Deborah. This woman rose up in a time when Israel was just in a total mess. She rose up as a judge in Israel and she, she knew who she was and she began to give the people counsel. And there was a day that God also laid upon her to give orders to the commander in chief on how they should go to war. Think about it, she understood what her assignment was. And when she came to the commander, she was able to speak boldly. That's one thing that finding your purpose does to you. It creates a boldness on the inside of you. Many people who know me, people who know me really well on this platform that we've come way back, they know that this is a different Claudia. If you met me in my secondary school days, like we call it back in Cameroon, or middle school, as we call it out here, or high school, you will know that I was a very shy person. I could not even raise my voice. But when you find your purpose, when you find your purpose, you become unstoppable, not because you in pride, but you become unstoppable because of the things that you do. People will not hold you down. You will not have to fight for your rights. You will not have to fight for your voice to be heard. Oh, God. Yeah. You will not have to do that because you are just walking in your purpose. You are walking in that thing that God has called you. You are unique in yourself. When Deborah came to the commander, uh, of the army of Israel, she just laid it out there. And what did the commander do? He said, if you're not coming with me, I'm not going to war. This was a society where it was predominant, it is a, it's a male domineering society. But when this woman rose up and began to walk in her assignment, the men respected her. There was no man pushing her down. There was nobody saying, uh, Deborah, you need to stay quiet. They were able to respect her assignment. They respected the purpose upon her life. So I want to encourage you women, if you are thinking you are trying to find your voice in your home, at your job site, in your business, in your society, in your community, in the world at large, Seek to understand your purpose and ask God, how can I begin to walk in that purpose, in that assignment, in that thing that you created me to do? That is how you become unstoppable in this world where you think that you have to fight for your rights. Mm. Amen. Amen. Are we getting something? Yes. Oh, God. Good, good, good. Oh, good. A lot. Oh, Thank you. Amen. So now we see Esther or Deborah, these were two women. We have other women in the Bible, but these are two women that we see that were unstoppable in their time because leading to our second point, they had an encounter with God. They did not just show up. Esther did not just show up to the king, right? Yeah. To ask, to demand that something has to be done. For her people. Deborah did not just step up to the army, to the commander of the army of Israel without knowing where she was coming from. That brings us to our step, second point. Who is an unstoppable woman? It's a woman who seeks the face of God. Mm. 
we know that Esther could not change the laws that were working against her. The law said that you could not go to the king if he did not, um, if he had not requested for you to come into his presence. You could not do that. She couldn't change that law. The laws didn't permit her to go into the king's presence. She didn't have to fight against the law, but she sought after the God who was capable to overrule the law in her favor. That is how we walk as unstoppable women. When the laws don't favor us, when you go to work and your boss is trying to push you down, when you think that you are in a relationship that your, you, your voice is being pushed down or you feel like you are living under abuse, how can you do to become unstoppable? Is to seek the face of God. It is time for us to look onto our creator who can do the fighting for us without lifting a finger. I believe that when women pray, they draw the attention of God faster. So if we can, as women, we know how to talk, right? We know how to do all the chatter. We know how to make all the noise. If we can take that same energy and seek the face of God, I believe that we draw God's attention as women. There is something mm -hmm. about the woman that God responds to. Mm -hmm. If we look in the Bible, anytime the women prayed, God responded. We want to talk about Hannah, God responded. We want yeah. to talk about Sarah herself, God responded. We want to talk about Esther that we are talking about today, God responded. Deborah, God responded. Like, tell me, are we different from these women? These were unstoppable women. That's why we are reading about them. Do you want yeah. your legacy to be read after you have left this place? You, it is time for us to go back to God and cry out to God and say, God, why am I here? What is my purpose? What is it that you want me to do to make an impact in my home? They say they, we have this common phrase, charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. How can I impact my home? Why am I in this family in the first place? If we can go back to God and begin to seek the face of God, he will, he will surely reveal himself to you. I said that in the life of an unstoppable woman, prayer is not an option. It is a necessity. Mm. It is not an option, women of God. It is not an option. The things that we cannot get from our husbands, from our society, by our talking and our little tricks, we know women, we have our little tricks, right? When we want to get something yeah. from our spouse, when we want to get things from people, we know our little tricks that we play. But when all of those tricks and the talking has failed, yeah. prayer can do it. Mm. Prayer can do it. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in my marriage. Women, there are some things that talking will not move a man. You can talk from now to tomorrow. You can scream. You can bring all your rights and put them on the table. That will not cut the deal. But I tell you, when a woman puts her knees on the ground and pray, something will begin to move. That is how you make yourself unstoppable. That is how you demand respect from your husband. That is how you demand respect from the people that come around you. That is how you demand respect from your boss. When you begin to pray some things into your career, when you begin to pray some things into your place of work, into your business, in the world that they say that only this certain kind of even amongst women, we're not talking about in a world where it is men domineering, but even amongst women, you know that when you come into some certain circles, you know that oh, this one, I, I need to, I need to put, I need to go back and do my as do my homework before I step into some certain circles. But that is what prayer can do. You can pray your way through. That is what Esther did. That is how she became unstoppable. That the king could say that, ask me for anything and I'll give you even all. 
So what are we doing? Virtuous women of Canada, what are we doing? Are we using our time for something else? Are we using that time to do? Mm. I have seen prayers done things in my home. I have seen prayer transform my marriage. I have seen prayers transform the life of my children. I have seen prayers bring family members to Christ. I have seen prayers transform my very life. Help me find myself. Help me find my confidence. You know, mm. sometimes we, 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 we know when we are insecure. I used to be a very insecure person. Like always feeling that other, other people were better than me. Time. Are you thinking about yourself that way? Anytime you see your, your other mates doing something, you are feeling like I'm left out. I, 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 it's like life is passing me by or I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna amount to anything. That is the kind of thoughts I used to have about myself. But when I began to seek the face of God and to understand what is my purpose? What is my assignment? It made me to walk into every room with my head up, not in pride, but in confidence, yeah. knowing mm -hmm. who I am and what I bring to the table. When you know who your God is and when you understand why God created you, when, you under, when God makes you to understand who you are, it's not what God is telling you. When you understand who you are and what God has told you about yourself. I tell you, women, you're going to walk with an understanding that nobody needs to tell you that you are who you are. You know, sometimes we always wait for people to tell, tell us who we are. That is what I was doing. Every day I wake up and I'm expecting that my husband should tell me, oh, Claudia, you look beautiful today. Oh, Claudia, you are doing great today. Oh, Claudia, this and that. But that was not happening. I had to find that for myself. I always use this analogy. I say that for a, to, to, for a woman to understand and to find fulfillment in her purpose is like you bake a cake. We all know what it means. You bake a cake. Do you know if you bake a cake, you can eat that cake without an icing? Yeah. If you bake a cake, you can eat your cake with an icing. When, when somebody comes along and puts an icing on that cake, it's an add-on. You can enjoy it. But think about it. If you had not baked any cake, where are they going to put the icing on? Hmm. That is what it means. When we have not gone back to our creator, he created you and I. Your husband did not create you. The society did not create you. The government did not create you. God created you and he knows why he created you. Created you. He knew he, when he created you, he had a plan and a plan for your life. Go back. If you are confused about what God has called you to do, if you are confused about your identity, people keep labeling you with different, different labels in life. Oh, mm. that sad lady. Oh, that thing. Oh, that lady that got married to that man, that abuser. Oh, that lady that just got divorced. Those are the labels that people are putting on you. But what is the label that God is putting on you? Ah. What is the label that God is putting on you? That is, the, that is where we have to go back to God. When he puts a label on you, when he gives you a description, I'm telling you, you will begin to walk in fulfillment. You'll, be, you'll find yourself that you are happy without, without waiting for people to make you happy. That's right. If you still wake up every day and think that somebody has to make you happy, wake up. That person that you are waiting for to make you happy also needs to oh realize how they are going to make themselves happy. So if you have your cake, if you bake your cake, if you find your purpose, anybody coming on around you to make you happy, they're adding an icing on your cake. If mm -hmm. you don't have no cake, there is no icing for you. That's right. Now that we know that Finding our purpose is, um, is important and it makes us unstoppable. And how we go about that is to seek the face of God, to understand that purpose and to walk in it and to find our confidence and to find our voice. 
will that for us to sustain that we need an authority over us we need a covering we need a covering that brings me to my third point and a woman who is unstoppable is a woman who understands the place of authority mm. An unstoppable woman is a woman who understands the place of authority. I know when we hear this phrase, it's very common in our Christian circle sometimes, submit to authority. We cringe. <laughs> we kind of cringe about it. Why? Because submission has been used in some settings, I'll say in some settings, that people have been abused. But on the other hand, there are women who think to be powerful means they will not take advice or instructions from no one, especially from the men in their lives. Mm. We think that to be powerful, to be an unstoppable woman, to be the boss lady, that's a new term now, to be the boss lady, we don't need no person. We don't need no authority over us. We don't need anybody telling us what to do. We can do it all by ourselves. I want to, I want to <laughs> disappoint you by saying that that is a lie from the pit of hell. If you think that you are a boss lady, you are a leader, you are making it, and you don't need anybody telling you anything, you are heading for a downfall you are heading for a downfall. I'm proud to say that I'm a woman under authority. We all need an authority over us. Esther would have thought to herself, I'm, I'm a queen, I'm, I'm royalty. I don't need to listen to my uncle Mordecai. What does he know? He is just the gatekeeper. I am I'm the queen. Mm. Are you thinking to yourself, that I don't need nobody talking to me. I don't need anybody telling me what to do and what not to do. I know what I'm doing. I don't need the help of anybody. That is a danger place that we are living in. I wanna say that a woman under authority is a strong and unstoppable woman and not a weak woman as the world may describe her. A woman under authority is a strong and unstoppable woman, not a weak woman as the world may describe her. What authority does to you, it provides for you a covering women. Sometimes we don't, we don't know it all. If you come to a place that you think that you know it all, then you are deceiving yourself. You need a covering. You need people who can tell you, my sister, you, you add right here. You can do it better. This is the best way to go about it. This, you can take this other route and it'll be better for you. I'm telling you, I have an authority in this house and I respect that authority. I also have other authorities, my mentors, people that I look up to. It might not be your spouse. It might be other authorities that are in your life, people that you look up to. We all need an authority in whatever area that you are trying to live out your life. Whether you need it in your marriage, you need it in your business, you need it in your academics, you need it in your professional life. You need a covering to be unstoppable in the things that you do because we all need counsel. Even Jesus himself was a man under authority. He was yeah. God himself, but he decided to listen to his father. It was not about what he wanted to do, but it was about what the father was saying to him. So if Jesus was a man under authority, so who are we not to be under authority? If we say that Jesus is our, is, is the person that we look up to, is our role model, then we have to be women under authority. We need to have a covering of somebody that can mentor us, somebody that can teach us, somebody that can guide us in the things that God has called us to be. When we submit under authority, we tend to walk in authority because that same spirit rubs off on us. 
That is the secret of having an authority over you. When we walk under authority, that authority rubs upon us. Have you ever submitted to somebody and you discover that their strength, you begin to see their strength in you. You begin to see their abilities in you. You begin to see some traits in them in yourself. You see that you begin to walk in authority yourself. That is what walking under authority does. So if you are here today as, I don't know, whatever area that you're working in life and you feel that you can do it all by yourself, wake up. You need an authority. Mm -hmm. Go to God, ask him, seek to understand who are those people who are doing it better than you are. It is no, it is no shame to learn from other people who do it better than you. You can always learn from other people. Today, we have established that an unstoppable woman is one who has found her purpose and who is persistently seeking the face of God and who is walking in authority yet submits under authority. I really want to stress this point. She is walking in authority because she is unstoppable. She is walking in that thing that God has called her to do yet. She submits to authority. She lives and breathes God's assignments for her life every day. She is not afraid of those who may try to intimidate her because she knows who she is and who she is. Women of Canada, I know we say we are virtuous women, but I want you to see yourself as that woman that God has placed in Canada to bring a change, to bring an impact that when you have left this earth, people will still be gleaning from your life. Uh, you want to show your world that you are unstoppable because you are walking in your assignment. Such a woman, nobody can hold her back. Her husband will celebrate her. Society will celebrate her. Have you ever seen any woman that has done great things and people are shunning her? People say, no, sit down quiet. There's a time that when you walk in your, when you walk in your assignment, when you walk in your purpose, people will identify with you. I just want to mention this woman, the Samaritan, Samaritan woman as we wrap up this evening. This was a woman that the entire society knew her as a woman who has had five marriages and they're all broken. And she is now hanging out with a man that is not even her husband. But the Bible tells us that when she met with Jesus, that, that title, that label, that description of her change, when she encountered God, she found that she was an evangelist. She was called to preach the gospel. When you read about the story of this one, when you Google her, the Bible says that when I went and she was an evangelist, when did this was a woman that was she, she had divorced many women. She was just a wayward woman. Nobody wanted to identify with her. But there was something that changed. Something flipped about her. What happened? She encountered Jesus. What happened? She discovered her assignment. What happened? She put a new identity and she began to run with it. Nobody could. The people now, when she went, to the, to the village to call the people. The people came and they listened to Jesus and they gave their heart to Jesus. The societal perception about this woman changed. When we think about, um, uh, when, when we think about um, Mother Teresa, we all know about her today. We all talk about her today. Why? because she knew that she was called to reach out to the underprivileged children in India. Presidents, leaders all over the world recognize her. I know that one of the major uh, visions of the Virtuous Women of Canada is to reach out to the underprivileged. But it would take all of you to become intentional about that vision. If that is what God has called you to do, 
how intentional are you about reaching out to these underprivileged people? Mm -hmm. So today I want to really challenge you. I hope you got something that you will go back home today and think about that you are an unstoppable woman. Why? Not because you are a boss, not because you, you own some degrees, not because you have arrived in society, but because you understand your assignment, because you are a woman under authority and you are seeking the face of God to understand every step of that assignment and you are walking in it and you are fulfilling it every day of your life. Esther did it and her entire nation was saved. Deborah did it and the children of Israel were able to go to war and conquer. What are you going to do with your assignment? Are you gonna let the world keep stopping you in your tracks? Are you gonna let yourself to stop you in your tracks? Are you gonna let your friends tell you that you cannot do it? Are you gonna let people tell you that you don't have, any, you don't have anything to offer? But when you understand your purpose, your assignment, your identity in God, and you begin to walk in it and fulfill it, then you become an unstoppable woman in your home, in your society, in your community, and in the world at large. So I want to thank you. This is where I want to wrap up. And I just want us to go to God. As we are meditating, I want you to go to God. Maybe you have never asked yourself this question. Oh, what is my assignment? Hmm. What is it that you have called me to do? I'm part of this group, but what is, why am I here? What, what am I supposed to be doing here? I want you to go to God and just talk to him. Say, Father, help me identify. Help me find that thing that you created me to be so that I can begin to live a fulfilled life, a happy life. Let us go to God and pray. From here on, Sister Ijan. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, thank you so much for a time like this, God. Ah, some of us do not understand our purpose in life. Oh God, I pray for the grace that we would understand our purpose, that as we begin to come closer.